Alwyn in Jakarta, Indonesia writes to me and he says, Paul, from my experience, there are few types of attenuators. Oh my yes. There are potentiometers, stepped attenuators, and later digital relays and so on. Now my question is, how big is the type of attenuation uh, uh, for its impact on overall preamp sound quality if we move from a standard carbon potentiometer then to more precise resistor-based stepped attenuators? Huge. So for many years, we, well, God, I can't tell you how many preamplifiers I've designed, we've designed, we've built, we've shipped thousands and thousands of them. And I would say up until maybe just a few years ago, and remember, we've been doing this 50 years, for the vast majority of that, those five decades, the volume control was perhaps the most important element for sound quality in a preamp bar none, bigger than even the amplification circuit itself. Huge. So we would buy, oh gosh, fancy Alps and Noble Pots. We would do it by ear. We would listen to it. We've done stepped attenuators. I mean, people have gone bananas over it and not for no reason at all. For sure, it makes a huge difference. Now what's changed is I'd say in the last four or five years, we now have some amazing, very neutral sounding, digitally controlled analog volume controls that are combinations of chips and some parts. And those, you can hardly hear anything going in and out. And I mean, it only took us 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> so when we build new preamps today, you'll find those very parts inside of it. And there aren't that many of them because, you know, there aren't many audiophiles. So big companies that make chips aren't all that interested in our tiny little segment of the market. So when we find something that works, we nail it and grab it. So today, not a big deal. For the last 40 something years, 45 years, a really big deal, okay? Hope that answers your question.